M. Night Shyamalan is a polarizing filmmaker, there is no doubt about that. But there are two films within his filmography that I have never seen before, and that's The Village and Lady in the Water. But with his newest film, Trapped, coming out this weekend, I thought, well, now's a good time to finally sit down and watch those two films for the first time, completing my M. Night Shyamalan education, so I can finally say I've seen every single M. Night Shyamalan movie. Except for Trapped, because that comes out this weekend. But anyways, consider this a double feature movie review, starting with The Village. Let's go. The Village is also celebrating its 20th anniversary because it came out in 2004. It has now been 20 years since it came out to this exact day, to be exact. But this is a star-studded cast in which you have these group of villagers that live isolated from everybody. Oh, spoiler alert, the twist is there's these villagers that got fed up with the world. They got tired and shit happened in their life. And so they just decided to seclude themselves from the world and live in this village where you have these monsters that basically haunt them and keep them in line. And then Bryce Dallas Howard's character, she, her, her man gets sick and so she wants to go into the outside world to find his medicine only to find out spoiler alert that they are not living in old times and they're actually living in modern times and the monsters that are hunting them are actually the villagers all dressed up just to keep them scared now like i said this is just one of those movies especially one of those m night movies that for whatever reason, I just never got around to watching until just now. And, but I always heard that the consensus around this movie is mixed for the most part. I mean, before this movie came out, he came out with Signs, Unbreakable, which is my favorite of his filmography, and um, The Sixth Sense. And he came out with all three of those bangers, and then he came out with this, and that was the one, that was the turning point for everybody. I'm like, huh, maybe this M. Night guy is not the next Spielberg, as the magazines were calling him. This was definitely the turning point for this man where his career took a turn for the worse, but it all started with The Village. Granted, The Village is not his worst film, but it's also not his best. And for the twists, I mean, I kind of already knew about it, but it didn't make it any more impactful just watching the twists within the context of the movie, though. It also doesn't help that a lot of people's problem with this movie is that the trailer sold them one thing, but it turned out to be another. They thought it was just going to be some horror movie that took place in the woods, and then it turned out the first half of the movie is just some forced hackney romance, and then one of them gets hurt, and so one of them has to go into the outside world, and that's what that's the movie that was pitched to everybody. But for me personally, I mean, I didn't necessarily dislike the movie, but at the same time, I didn't like it either. And the monsters that's wearing the red coats and everything with the little spikes coming out their back... I mean, they really, I really felt nothing seeing them. I really didn't feel like they were much of a threat. But I will give glory to the cast because it is a star studded cast. And that was one of the draws that drew people in because really you had a whole bunch of people in here that, while they are A list um, actors, but they weren't A list in terms of getting butts in seats. But once you see the cast within this movie, you're like, huh, what's M. Night about to do with them? And it turns out he really did almost nothing with them. But with the exception of Bryce Dallas Howard, to which, from what I'm hearing, is was also her first major breakout role. And to her credit, she was good in this film, especially since she had to play a blind person and she was basically the heart and anchor that drove this movie. She was pretty good in this movie. Walking Phoenix, I mean, he was okay in the movie, but his character had almost, I mean, he really had nothing to work with with this film. Except getting killed by Adrian Brody's character, who is let's just say, mentally impaired. But I didn't realize Adrian Brody was in this movie, but he's one of those well-respected actors that anytime you see him in a movie, you're like, huh, what's he about to do? And he's pretty good, and this is probably one of my least favorite performances from him. Some other notable cast members within this film are the late William Hurt, Sigourney Weaver, who I also didn't know was in this film. You also got um, Brandon Gleason in this movie as well. Mad-Eye Moody himself. But in the end, this movie definitely confirmed to me that this was the turning point for M. Night Shyamalan's career in which it took a turn for the worse. But luckily, he bounced back from that. But like I said, this is also not his worst. He took some big swings with this movie, especially with the cast. And did it pay off? Well, that's up to you to decide. And did the movie as a whole work for you? Again, that's up to you to decide. But for me, there were things that worked in this movie and things that 
just didn't really work with this movie, and that's why I'm going to give The Village the thumbs down emoji. Next up is Lady in the Water, which also stars Bryce Dallas Howard, and I honestly didn't realize that either. But this is probably the most head-scratcher of all his films, now that I've finally seen it, and a lot of people put this with his worst films, with The Last Airbender, After Earth, and um, The Happening, and... Yep, this is definitely one of his worst. Is it his worst overall? I don't think so, but this is definitely his most confusing one. I think he took some big swings with this one, and it definitely failed. I'll give, I'll give M. Night credit for this, because we always criticize Hollywood and filmmakers for not making original content, and M. Night, he gave us an, an original movie. He did. I'll give him that. Did it work? Absolutely fucking not. This movie was conceived off of some stories he told his children when they were young, and then he adapted it into a script, and he pitched it to Disney, who was a frequent collaborator with M. Night at a point, and he had a meeting with them. He tried to explain the story to a Disney exec, and yeah, they weren't buying it, and so M. Night, he, he let his ego get the best of them, stormed out, and so he went to Warner Brothers, and yeah, we all saw the movie. I'm not even going to try to explain the plot, it's just confusing, and I still don't understand, I'm still trying to process it, but from what I understand, it's like, Paul Giamatti's character, he finds Bryce Dallas Howard in a pool, and she's talking about some creatures, and basically stuff that's manifesting into a story that's written by M. Night Shyamalan's character in the movie, ha <laughs> ha, way to uh, talk about ego, but the best way I can describe this movie, it is boring, pretentious, and dumb. There's even a movie critic in this movie in which I think M. Night, he was trying to take jabs at film criticism, and <laughs> yeah, I think that kind of backfired on him. But like I said, Bryce Dallas Howard, this was probably, I believe, her second film I ever saw her in, and then you got Paul Giamatti in this movie, and M. Night Shyamalan, he has a, he has a tendency to casting well-respected actors in his movies, only for them to turn out to be shit. And like I said, he really is in this movie playing an actual writer in this movie, thinking that everything he writes is just going to be this big masterpiece and it's going to save the world, as he was told in the movie. Other than Bryce Dallas Howard and Paul Giamatti, you also got, and also in my Shyamalan, you also got um, Jeffrey Wright in this movie. You got Sarita Chordhury in this movie. Forgive me if I mispronounce her name. Um, you got Freddie Rodriguez, and then you got the late David Augen Stiers, doing the narration in the beginning of this movie. If The Village was the turning point in M. Night's career, Lady in the Water was the start of his losing streak. And like I said before, I give M. Night credit for making something original, which is definitely needed, but just because you make something original isn't guaranteed that it's going to be good, and that's why I give Lady in the Water the thumbs down emoji. It's not his worst, I'll give him that, but it's also not his best. Like, this, this movie definitely didn't piss me off like After Earth did, but <sighs> you took a big swing and you miss M. Night with this one. But those are my thoughts on The Village and Lady in the Water after watching those movies for the first time. And now I can say I have seen every M. Night Shyamalan movie and I'm ready for Trapped, which comes out this weekend. So what do you think of M. Night Shyamalan as a filmmaker? What do you think of his movies? What do you think is his best? What do you think is his worst? Let me know in the comments section below.